So Sarah's is stupid because he forgot to what? To for he forgot to record the beginning and the end of this video. So I will do it. So here's Q and A number four. Let's go. What bass drum pedal do you use? I use a Tama Iron Cobra Power Glide pedal with just an old beat up felt beater on it. Uh, I really like this pedal. It's just it has kind of a heavy feel to it, but thanks to the whole power glide thing, it has a little extra thrust uh, towards the end, so it's still very easy to play fast up with. So for me, it's just a perfect combination because I like to hit really hard on the bass drum. Uh, I also have a double pedal version of this, but then it's the Tama, um, the the wood beaters for the Iron Cobras that that I have. Uh, it's in a case over there. I pretty much use that for gigs uh, and when I'm playing, obviously double pedal stuff, but. For the most time, for the most part, I have this on the kit. Tama Iron Cobra Power Glide pedal with unknown name felt beater. What is the best snare drum head? My favorite snare drum head is the Evans Heavyweight, which is what I have on here right now. It has a lot of crack to it, a lot of volume, and it's just overall a really controlled, a really nice all-around head. You can tune it low, you can tune it high. It just delivers overall, and I always keep coming back to this head. I like the the H uh, the HD Dry, the G2 coated. Uh, easy reverse dot. I like a bunch of other ones from Evans as well, but I always keep coming back to the heavyweight. It's extremely durable. You don't really have to change it that often. I've never broken one, and overall, it's just a perfect snare drum head for me. What do you think about carbon sticks? I'm really not that big of a fan of sticks that aren't made from wood in general. Whether that's carbon or if it's metal with a with a like plastic sleeve or whatever it is, it's just I've actually never owned one and never tried a pair. I just know that if you think about it. Those sticks are meant to basically hold pretty much forever, right? But when you hit a cymbal, when you hit a drum or anything, you're still delivering the same amount of power, right? You're not hitting lighter just because you have those sticks. You're still delivering the same amount of power. So if that amount of power doesn't go back into the sticks and cause the sticks to wear down and break eventually, where does that power go? Well, either it goes straight into your wrists, which is bad, or if you have good technique, it would still go straight into the cymbals. So basically, uh, putting on or using carbon sticks or metal sticks or whatever, tend from what I heard from others, it tends to to wear down your cymbals and your heads a lot more. And for me, I'd much rather change sticks every now and then than have to change my cymbals because I break them just because of the sticks I use. So. I never, like I said, I've never tried them though, so I mean, if, you, if they work for you, sure, they work, but I wouldn't really want to, to use them, in all honesty, just for, just for my personal preference. I like the feel and touch of, and the weight and, of a wood stick, and I pretty much find, found my perfect pair with the, uh, the Vader Gospel Series Fusion Sticks. So I'm pretty much happy, uh, but if you want to try them, go ahead, but just know that they tend to break cymbals uh, and heads a bit more from what I've heard. So I'm going to get the opportunity to join an open drum shed. I'm super nervous about that. Any tips? How do I not lock up? And what can I practice for it? When it comes to drum sheds or just jamming out with people and other drummers, it's important that you play on your strengths. So, I mean, say you're sitting in a room, you have four other drummers, or just one other drummer or whatever, and you, you guys are jamming out, you're trading fours or whatever. Uh, when it's your turn to play, don't try to, basically don't try to do stuff you're not comfortable with. Just play the things you know and make sure you play them well. If, you, if you're a groovy type of drummer, just hold a groove, explore a groove that you like, play your favorite kind of stuff. Don't go too crazy, but it's also very important to listen to the other drummers. What are they doing? Try to build off of their ideas. If one guy starts a, maybe like a samba-ish kind of thing, maybe it's good for you when it's your turn to kind of mimic that. You do what he did, but build off of it and just kind of, you know, try to basically build off each other's ideas and play together and not just when it's you, it's just you. Like, don't go tunnel vision, if you know what I mean? But still, with that in mind, still play, play, on, play on your strengths and find a couple of patterns and stuff that you know work, that you know you're comfortable and with, with and just kind of see what you can do with them. And don't, honestly, don't think about it too much. Just kind of play, just kind of be you. It's not the end of the world. You're still going to be a cool drummer. The other guys are still going to enjoy jamming with you. So just do your thing. And one thing, one thing more to keep in mind is when someone else, if you're doing that kind of thing, you're a couple of drummers or just two or whatever, when someone else that's not you is playing their solo or their group, their uh, parts of four bars or whatever that they have to improvise with, don't do a lot of stuff in the background. That's not your time to, to play a lot of crazy grooves or stuff. Just keep time. Hold just, just like, oh, sorry. Keep time on the hi-hat or something so they can do what they want to. Or just play a very simple like, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just make sure that one's on as well, but... You 
know, you just keep it very simple while they're doing their uh, their thing, because they will give, do the same thing back to you. So if there's a lot of th stuff going on and you're trying to improvise over that, it's just going to be chaos. So keep that in mind, and honestly, dude, you just have fun. What small drum gadget would you recommend? The one little drum accessory that I never regretted that I bought and I keep recommending to people over and over is this, the uh, Gibraltar Quick Release Hi-Hat Clutch. Basically, it, it doesn't have a screw underneath, so if you're changing hi-hats a lot or, you know, just basically it's easy and fast to set up. What it, it, you basically just pull this piece off like that and take the cymbal and the felt off, and there you go. And then when you want to put it back on, you just press your thumb into the middle piece there. It pops up like that, slide it over, and it's on. So there's no screw or anything, and you can just do it like that. Very nice and easy for changing hi-hats or just setting up and down your kit at a gig or whatever. You don't want to, basically don't, you want to have as few parts as possible that you need to screw on and stuff that you can lose in the dark. So it's like that, it's on. I've never had it come off. It, do, it just doesn't come off. It's just overall a really nice hi-hat clutch. So I would really recommend it. The uh, Gibraltar Quick Release Hi-Hat Clutch is what I think the name is. If a woodchuck could chuck wood, how many drumsticks would he go through? If he plays rim shots, about two pairs a month. I realize that this is a slightly different type of question, but I've been struggling with what to play during the big trash can endings that occur during the closing section of some songs. I find myself freezing up and or playing the same things repeatedly, and find it hard to break the barrier and be creative during these sections. What's your advice, and is it possible for you to explain some chops or licks uh, which you may fall back on during trash can ending? Thanks so much, you inspired and made a massive impact on my playing recently, and I'm very grateful for your efforts to share drumming knowledge. Greetings from Australia, thanks! One thing that I like to do during the trash can endings is that I like to just start with, well I don't have the double pedals on now, but I would have a pair of double pedals pretty much always with me when I go on gigs just for this pretty much. Uh, I would just hammer on the double pedals like, you know, like that and just cymbals like crazy in the beginning and then maybe the middle part of the whole trash can ending, if you think of it like that, the middle section I would just kind of either keep that going with my feet uh, basically keep the feet going and then just do kind of fills you know over that just playing like you know, six stroke rolls and stuff like oh so imagine your feet are going and you do like you know, see what I mean just kind of it sounds really crazy there's a lot going on it's like a two layers at once um, and then maybe I would round that off with just doing some yeah, some more kind of feels like roll down the toms uh, without the feet so maybe that so maybe that kind of you see what I mean? It kind of rounds it off. It starts off crazy with cymbals, and then it's just really crazy in the middle. And then you take away the feet part, and you just do like like down the down the toms, maybe slow it down. Do like a you know playing like something like that towards the end, or like you know, see what, that kind of stuff is right before you end it, and then you know that's kind of I mean, it's kind of a silly explanation, but you see that's kind of kind of how I like to do it. But one pattern that I like to use a lot, which you could try, is basically just kick, right, left, right, left, left. Uh, and so you play accent, 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 and then two bass notes. So... See what I mean? Like, I like to do that, just kind of at the end, like... See, something like that. So, there's a lot of stuff you could do. Basically, just try to go a bit crazy and then try to make something, play something a little more that, that you could grab onto for the other guys in the band to kind of realize, oh, he's, he's ending the crazy stuff now. Okay, here, here comes the ending. Ah, like that. You want to basically inform the others of when you're done with your crazy stuff, if, if you're the one, which usually the drummer is the one kind of dictating how long the, the trash can endings are. Uh, but I hope that helps. It's a little bit, a bit of a silly explanation, but hopefully you got something out of it. So, did you like this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep going. Just do it. <laughs> if you like this video, <laughs> please subscribe <laughs> and uh, keep asking more questions to Cyrus. And... Um, yeah, this is the end. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>